Hi everybody and welcome to what is networking. Let's begin. Networks are simply things connected. For example, your friendship circle. You're all connected because of similar interests, hobbies, skills and sorts. Networks can be found in all walks of life, a city's pu public transportation system, infrastructure such as the national power grid for electricity, meeting and greeting your neighbors, and postal systems for sending letters and parcels. But more specifically, in computing, networking is the same idea, just dispersed to technological devices. Take your phone as an example. The reason that you have it is to access things. We'll cover how these devices communicate with each other and the rules that follow. In computing, a network can be formed by anywhere from two devices to billions. These devices include everything from your laptop and phone to security cameras, traffic lights and even farming. Networks are integrated into our everyday life, be it gathering data for the weather, delivering electricity to homes or even determining who has the right of way at the road. Because networks are so embedded in the modern day, networking is a central concept to grasp in cyber security. Take the diagram below as an example. Alice, Bob and Jim have formed their, their network. We'll come on to this a bit later on. Networks come in all shapes and sizes, which is something that we will also come to discuss throughout this module. And now let's answer the question, what is the key term for devices that are connected together? And that will be network. So let's type in that network like this and we submit. Perfect. And now we can move on to the next uh, task, which is what is the Internet? Now that we've learned what a network is and how one is defined in computing, just devices connected, let's explore the Internet. The Internet is one giant network that consists of many, many small networks within itself. Using our example from the previous task, let's now imagine that Alice made some new friends named Zane and Toby that she wants to introduce to Bob and Jim. The problem is that Alice is the only person who speaks the same language as Zane and Toby. So Alice will have to be the messenger. Because Alice can speak both languages, they can communicate to one another through Alice, forming a new network. The first iteration of the Internet was within the ARPANET project in the late 1960s. This project was funded by the United States Defense Department and was the first documented network in action. However, it wasn't until 1989 when the Internet as we know it was invented by Tim Berners-Lee by the creation of the World Wide Web. It wasn't until this point that the Internet was used as a repository for storing and sharing information, like it is today. Let's relate Alice's network of friends to computing devices. The Internet looks like a much larger version of this sort of diagram, so the diagram is, that we see right here. As previously stated, the Internet is uh, made, up of, uh, made up of many small networks all joined together. These small networks are called private networks, where networks connecting these small networks are called public networks, or the Internet. So, to recap, a network can be one of two types, a private network and a public network. Devices will use a set of labels to identify themselves on a network, which we will come onto in, this, uh, in the task um, below. So now, let's answer the question, uh, who invented the World Wide Web? And that is Tim Berners-Lee. So let's type that in, Tim Berners-Lee, like this, and submit. And now let's move on to the next task, which is identifying devices on a network. To communicate and maintain order, devices must be both identifying and identifiable on a network. What use is it if you don't know whom you're talking to at the end of the day? Devices on a network are very similar to humans in the fact that we have two ways of being identified. 
our name and our fingerprints. Now we can change our name through uh, the poll, but we can't, however, change our fingerprints. Every human has an individual set, uh, individual set of fingerprints, fingerprints, which means that even if they change their name, there is still an identity behind it. Devices have the same thing, two means of identification, with one being permeable. These are an IP address and Media Access Control address, or MAC address. Think of this as being similar to a serial number. IP addresses. Briefly, an IP address or Internet Protocol address can be used as a way of identifying a host on a network for a period of time, where that IP address can then be associated with another device without the IP address changing. First, let's split up precisely what an IP address is in the diagram below. An IP address is a set of numbers that are, that are divided into four octets. The value of each octet will summarize to be the IP address of the device on the network. This number is calculated through a technique known as IP addressing and subnetting, but that is for another day. What's important to understand here is that IP addresses can change from device to device, but cannot be active simultaneously more than once within the same network. IP addresses follow a set of standards known as protocols. These protocols are the backbone of networking and force many devices to communicate in the same language, which is something that we'll come on to another time. However, we should recall that devices can be on both a private and public network. Depending on where they are will determine what type of IP address they have, a public or private IP address. A public address is used to identify the device on the internet whereas a private address is used to identify a device amongst other devices. Take the table and screenshot below as an example. Here we have two devices on a private network. So this device and this device, right? Which we see right here with their private IP addresses, right? These two devices will be able to use their private IP addresses to communicate with each other. However, any data sent to the internet from either of these devices will be identified by the same public uh, IP address, which we see right here. And of course, inside the table also. Public IP addresses are given by your internet service provider or ISP at a monthly fee. With other words, your bill. As more and more devices become connected, it is becoming increasingly harder to get a public address that isn't already in use. For example, Cisco, an industry giant in the world of networking, estimated that there would be approximately 50 billion devices connected on the internet by the end of 2021. Enter IP address versions. So far, we have only discussed one version of the Internet Protocol addressing scheme known as IPv4, which uses a numbering system of 2 to the power of 32 IP addresses, or 4.29 billion. So you can see why there is such a shortage. IPv6 is a new iteration of the Internet Protocol uh, addressing scheme to help tackle this issue. Although it is seemingly more daunting, it boasts a few benefits. Supports up to 2 to the power of 128 of IP addresses, or 340 trillion plus, resolving the issues faced with IPv4 and more efficient due to new methodologies. The screenshot below compares both an IPv6 and IPv4 address. MAC addresses. Devices on a network will all have a physical network interface, which is a microchip board found on the device's motherboard. This network interface is assigned a unique address at the factory it was built at, called a MAC address or Media Access Control address. The MAC address is a 12-character hexadecimal number, a base 16 numbering system used in computing to represent numbers, split into twos and separated by a colon. These colons are considered separators. And we have an example right here. Uh, the first six, six characters represent the company that made the network interface and the last six is a unique number, okay? However, an interesting thing with MAC addresses is that they can be faked or spoofed in a process known as spoofing. This spoofing occurs when a network device pretends to identify as another using its MAC address. 
When this occurs, it can often break poorly implemented security designs that assume that devices talking on a network are trustworthy. Take the following scenario. A firewall is configured uh, to allow any communication going to and from the MAC address of the administrator. If a device were to pretend or spoof this uh, MAC address, the firewall would now think that it is receiving communication from the administrator when it isn't. Places such as uh, cafes, coffee shops and hotels alike often use MAC address control when using their guest or public Wi-Fi. This configuration could offer um, uh, better services, that is, a faster connection for a price if you're willing to pay the fee per device. The interactive lab attached to this uh, task has been made to replicate this scenario. The interactive labs simulate a hotel Wi-Fi network where you have to pay for the service. You note that the router is not allowing Bob's packets, which are blue, uh, to the TriHackMe website and is placing them in the bin, but Alice's packets, which are green, are going through fine because she has paid for Wi-Fi. Try changing Bob's uh, MAC address to the same as Alice to see what happens. Deploy the interactive lab and proceed to answer the following questions below. Uh, but now let's answer the first four questions and then we can deploy the interactive lab and answer the fifth question, okay? So, let's see. What does the term IP stand for? And that will be Internet Protocol. So let's type that in. Uh, Internet, let's see. Internet Protocol. Submits. Awesome. What is each section of an IP address called? And that will be octet. Octet like this. Submit. How many sections in digits does an IP address have? And that will be four. What does the term MAC uh, stand for? And that will be media access control. There you go. And now deploy the, deploy the interactive lab using the view site button and spoof your MAC address to access the site. What is the flag? Okay, so first we can uh, click on view site. And now we can first begin with clicking on uh, request uh, site to see what happens. And when we click on request site, we see that nothing happens. The router is not allowing Bob's packets. So now let's copy the MAC address that belongs to uh, Alice and pretend or spoof as if the MAC address belongs to Bob. So we copy it first and then we paste it right here. And now let's click on request site once again. And we suddenly see that we can now access the site because now the router is allowing Bob's packets. And we get the flag that we see right here, which we can copy and use it to answer the last question. Submit, and there you go. Perfect. Okay, so let's now move on to the um, to task number four, which is ping. Ping is one of the most fundamental network tools available to us. Ping uses ICMP packets or Internet Control Message Protocol packets to determine the performance of a connection between devices, for example, if the connection exists or is reliable. The time taken for ICMP packets traveling between devices is measured by ping, such as in the screenshot below. This measuring is done using ICMP's echo packet and then ICMP's echo reply from the target device. Pings can be performed against devices on a network, such as your home network or resources like websites. This tool can be easily used and comes installed on operating systems such as Linux and Windows. The syntax to do a simple ping is ping followed by an IP address or ping followed by a website URL. Let's see this in action in the screenshot below. 
Here we are pinging a device that has the uh, private IP address that we see right here or that we can of course see in the um, uh, screenshot here. Uh, ping informs us uh, that we have sent six ICMP packets. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is correct. All of which were received with an average time of 5.3 seconds. Now we are going to do the same thing to ping the IP address that we see right here on the deployable website in this task. Pinging the correct address will reveal a flag to answer the following question below. Okay, so let's start answering the questions here. So what protocol does ping use? And that will be ICMP. So ICMP and we submit. What is the syntax to ping the IP address that we see right here? And that will be ping and then 10.10.10.10 like this and we submit. Fantastic. And now what flag do you get when you ping uh, the IP address that we see right here? And let's find out. So we click on view site and then we go up here and type in 8.8.8.8 .8 and then we click on send ping request. And there you go. We can see the flag uh, right here at the bottom. So we can copy the flag and paste it right here and submit. And we are done with this uh, task and let's see what's next. And nothing. So we can just click on uh, complete it and we are done with this room. Okay, everybody, uh, if you liked the video, found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it. And of course, subscribe to, uh, to the channel for more videos on Try Hack Me. Okay, talk to you next time.